Thank you all for coming out. Uh, really good turnout, very cool to see. Um, before we go ahead and get started, uh, we're gonna talk about production data apps on Databricks today. Just to give you some context on who I am, I'm a senior solutions architect at Databricks. I've been here for about three years or so, uh, but I've been using Databricks to build systems for about six plus years at this point. I work in our digital native segment, and I currently lead, uh, co-lead our data, war data warehousing SME group and run a blog and just generally help out building the data warehousing ecosystem on Databricks with partners such as the ones you'll see today, like Plotly, Liquibase, and quite a few others. So before that, I was in healthcare and um, uh, finance, doing portfolio optimization and investment analysis. So what are we gonna talk about today? I wanna define what a data app is, because it's a relatively new concept. I wanna differentiate it between a regular application and a production data application, and talk about what data apps on Databricks unlock for companies today. And then, of course, I wanna make this really interactive. You're gonna see a bunch of slides throughout the entire conference, so I wanna be uh, as interactive as possible and show a great demo and talk about some future looking forward applications for this. So first, before we jump in, what is a data app in general? Let's define that. To me, a data app is something that connects insights, so you can do BI reports, whatever analytic, whatever you're trying to discover, to an action in a single UX. So it's kind of the differentiation between interactivity and BI reports is being able to actually take action on the insight that you get. Second is being able to embed those insights and those actions that you take into workflows of everyday users that need to take that action. This could be non-technical users or technical users that just wanna speed up their developer productivity and workflow. And maybe most importantly is the ability to share insights with external even non-users, external parties who need that insight at their fingertips, whether that's executives, operatives out in the field, whatever the use case may be. So to give you a really clear contextual example of a data app is my favorite, the Bloomberg Terminal. So coming from finance, I've used this all over the place. It is not the greatest UI in the world, but it is by far one of the most powerful data applications to inject insights into the everyday workflow of finance professional users and build entire industries and business off of. Perfect example. And we'll show a couple examples for observability today on Databricks. So building apps is not a new thing. So what makes data apps specifically hard? Well, first, uh, data apps, full stack apps, is a different set of code, tools, and frameworks to build client-facing user applications. So this is different from what data teams are primarily used to, Python, R, SQL. So that creates you know, really disparate connections and disparate teams needing to collaborate and ultimately move slower to build any sort of analytical data application. Uh, thirdly, is data apps tend to be very, very highly stateful. It's not just read data, write data back out, but it's also an analyzing data holding state that could be building models, running inference on models, updating uh, assumptions and parameters and rerunning models in any complex analytics. We'll show a couple of interesting examples in the demo today. So why data apps at all and why the framework that I'll show today on Databricks? Well, if we can find a way to unify the application development process with the typical tools and frameworks that data teams that like Python and SQL use, then you empower your data teams to build more highly scalable and valuable data products. And from there, data teams can then empower other teams, whether it's technical operations teams or just complete end users, um, to drive more than they could have without these applications. So this ultimately gives people the capability to create full-fledged data products, whether that's internal or even full external data commercialization uh, initiatives. So how do we do this? What does this look like on Databricks um, and with Plotly Dash today, which is my uh, tool of choice for building data applications? So let's start on the back end, talk a little bit about how Databricks is positioned today to do this. I hope most of you have all seen this data maturity curve. This is a pretty common um, you know, thing we've talked about in the last couple of years. Ultimately, that as organizations mature, they wanna go from static reports to SQL ad hoc analytics to BI to then automated insights alerting prescriptive information with AI and ML. And Databricks has been working really hard for well over 10 years now to bridge that gap 
between BI and AI and solve that problem. So not only that, you know, it may be great in the future where AI, we, in a, we chat with an LLM and it gives us everything we wanna know, takes the action and we don't have to do anything. That's not quite where we're at today. So how I see AI being used, especially for the kind of BI to AI continuum is you know, using AI for different applications throughout that you know, BI AI stack. So whether that's automatically writing SQL for you, data validation, cleaning data with AI, data exploration, suggesting insights, or even prescriptive analytics alerting an LLM agents to take action for you. So this is leveraging AI across the entire data stack, even for existing kind of more old school type workflows. So ultimately Databricks is the unified stack to do that. With Databricks SQL and Lakeview dashboards, we've got BI covered. And of course we've been the data and AI company for our entire existence. And so now you can combine that really perfectly together to build apps and do everything you need with that application. So this is the kind of unified stack that you can build data apps on top of. So with an open data format, Delta Lake, hopefully everyone's all familiar with Delta Lake, on top of Unity Catalog, which is our unified governance layer to govern tables, raw data, models, functions, et cetera, anything you need, and embed AI throughout that entire tech stack. We've been able to do AI and ETL and orchestration for quite some time. Our most recent initiative is data warehousing in the last four years or so. So with our entrance into the data warehousing market about four years ago, we've dramatically uh, improved from basically you know, all purpose managed Spark clusters all the way to fully AI embedded intelligent workload optimization, completely serverless self-driving SQL warehouses. So this is not just a you know, feature development process, it's also the same innovation speed when it comes to performance. So even, even though you can use Databricks SQL, scale for ultra high concurrency, um, the queries themselves have improved at an extreme, extremely fast rate over the last two years, up to 4x faster. So this gives us a really nice foundation to build a completely unified AI app stack to be able to ingest data, transform it, query it, but also visualize and serve it for end users all on one place. So kind of overlaying the application layer into the stack, Unity Catalog becomes the critical juncture and the key point in doing apps on Databricks with Dash. So with Unity Catalog, you can automatically create resources, manage your resources. The app can create its own self-governed container for the data tables, context, functions, and models that it needs. And then the app layer can interact with all of those pieces with the Databricks SDK and the SQL connection. So the app can govern, create resources, it can interact and even build models, it can run jobs, it can of course do SQL querying and read and write table data all in one place. So before we go into an example, uh, I wanna highlight that you know, analytics is a continuum. You don't need to build apps for everything. Of course, you can do just basic SQL ad hoc analytics. We have a beautiful framework in our SQL editor to do so, and it's also AI embedded. You can create Lakeview dashboards, which I'll show a couple of Lakeview dashboards that I've created uh, over the last couple months just to show what you can do on Databricks today with Lakeview, system tables, and Databricks SQL. But I also wanna highlight where dashboards end and apps begin. When you find an insight, you wanna take action on it, and you don't wanna to have to go running around manually to disparate teams to do so. And of course, when you, go, when you want to go to a broader scale, you wanna host that app in a you know, production grade framework like Plotly Dash Enterprise or Databricks. So what does this look like in practice? I'm gonna go through a demo and we're gonna go from BI to AI. I'll show what you can do from an observability perspective with Lakeview dashboards and Databricks SQL. And we'll take a little scenario. Imagine, which many of you probably are, you're in a large enterprise, you have a Databricks deployment, over a thousand jobs, 50 plus SQL warehouses, thousand users across the platform, adoption is growing, costs are growing, everything's everywhere, all over the place. You need a framework to get a hold over your usage, figure out how to govern your warehouse and your lake house best. Well, we can do a lot of this with Lakeview dashboards and system tables. So we'll start there. And then we'll use Plotly Dash apps on Databricks to identify usage 
and find usage that is maybe not properly tagged. Of course, most companies use some sort of enterprise tagging framework to know where your uh, jobs and clusters and users are running. And so in the app, we're going to solve the problem of uh, having a lot of ghost usage that isn't tagged and create some tagging policies, update the analytics, and figure out how to increase the adherence to our tagging policies that we create in these apps. And then the other use case is LLM-generated alerts. So imagine I'm an, ops, I'm an ops person, not very technical. I know SQL a little bit, but I mainly just use kind of UI-based tools. I want to be able to figure out when things are going wrong in a contextual way with my tags. So we're going to walk through how we can use a LLM app using DBRX and Databricks to query uh, the data, automatically generate the SQL and API code to create the app, and then ultimately create that app for us automatically with no code. So before we jump in, here's the architecture of the actual app itself. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's see if we can see. It's a little bit small. But uh, what the app does first on startup, it will turn on, it'll connect to Databricks, create all the tables that it needs to save tag policies, tag compute resources, um, create the alert state that it manages for you. <clears throat> and it'll create tables, materialized views, and also AI functions in Unity Catalog governed on its own schema in an isolated way. And then from there, um, the UI is going to interact with Databricks SQL um, as the single interface throughout all of this um, to do the app tag management, to create policies, write data back to Delta, and close the loop to reanalyze your usage, not just you know, tagging, a, tagging a cluster today and then your usage updates later, but retroactively analyzing your usage if you tag a cluster. And then lastly, we're going to see how you can use AI functions and Databricks SQL to query DBRX to generate automatic embedded alerts. So let's actually go to the demo piece here. And before we jump in, um, just note my background. I am an analyst, business analyst by trade, so I'm not a full stack app developer. So the app that I'll show today is all Python, Plotly Dash, and Databricks built in roughly a week to kind of show relative developer productivity for this. <clears throat> so before we get into the actual app state, here's uh, a Lakeview dashboard template um, that I've created for data warehousing users. Um, and I'll share this at the end um, so everyone can take this template, import it, and use these templates that you see yourself. But we can take Lakeview, create Lakeview dashboards to analyze a SQL warehouse. Um, and it's kind of really hard to see. But you can pick a time range. And of course, track your spend over time. You can even set an alert threshold using Lakeview parameters. So this is almost app level functionality where you can start to interact with and change the parameters of your dashboard. So you can say if usage increases more than 20% over a rolling period, then flag it as red. And you can take these SQL queries and generate an alert. So of course, you can do all of this. You know, automatically if you want with the AI assistant as well, all embedded throughout Databricks. So that's kind of one simple example. Other examples include you know, monitoring how the warehouse scales over time, looking at concurrency scaling efficiency, kind of simplifying that view for you, and then monitoring query performance. So as an ops person, you want to be able to track SLAs over time and sort of your percentile metrics on your P50, 90, 99 metrics here. Furthermore, you can do quite a bit of stuff here, like monitor caching, trends, um, even do query level tagging, and actual query level resource allocation and cost attribution, all using Lakeview. So these are all SQL statements that are parameterized that you can use. Um, and that's kind of one of the great things I love about Lakeview is they're very lightweight, very shareable dashboarding applications. So from here, let's go to a slightly different use case to highlight maybe where dashboards um, start to end and apps begin. So let's say I have a basic usage dashboard here, you know, have some smooth moving averages looking at my trailing 7, 30, 90 day metrics. Um, but what if I want to analyze usage by my actual business use case? Companies generally use tags to do this. Um, so what you would want to do is use the Databricks system tables, which all these queries are based off of. 
and monitor the compliance to tagging policies that you create. So if you create these policies, generally you create them offline and implement them via Databricks, via a CICD pipeline or infrastructure management solution. Um, so here we can actually audit compliance to those tags. So it's actually a little bit hard to see. But, um, but here with uh, Lakeview parameters, you can insert a list of tag key value pairs and it will automatically scan through that usage um, in a SQL warehouse and figure out what proportion of your usage is compliant to the tagging policies that you want to implement. So here we have a demo tag and we can see that our environment is not very compliant. So in the Lakeview dashboard, we can't really do much to fix that. We can see that we don't have a lot of you know, properly tagged usage. We have usage that trends over time, but we have this kind of uh, ghost usage where we don't know where it's allocated. You can generate a report you know, to actually find the usage that isn't tagged, even write some really complicated SQL to figure out which tags are missing, which tags are available. But ultimately in Lakeview, you can't really fix the problem here. And this is kind of where data apps begin and dashboards you know, end. So moving over to the, dash, the app example, this is a UI for the Dash app, um, all built in Plotly Dash and Databricks on Databricks SQL. Here, you can actually uh, select a date range, pick a sub product, so we'll look at all purpose and SQL usage, and implement tagging policies. So before we even go up here, we can use this interface, and this is a uh, fully functional write back capability um, tool where you can define tagging policies here. You can add new tagging policies. So we can say new policy. And if I misspell it, apologies because I can barely see the screen. Okay. So my new policy description. And we can create a new key that we want to make sure we can audit compliance and enforcement to this tag, my key. And then we can either you know, edit that, continue to edit this like a spreadsheet, like a full app, or actually save it to our Databricks database. And so what happens here when you save it to Databricks is it goes to Databricks here, and when the app starts up, it creates the schema in Unity Catalog and creates all the tables that it needs to actually manage the state for the app. So we can go in here and as the app is updating, look at specific compute usage that we tag, alerts that we create, and also materialize views that we can generate that do a lot of complex ETL that we don't wanna to have to keep redoing over and over. So a lot of really powerful things here, but we also can store functions. So for our other use case that we'll explore here, we have a Databricks SQL function that wraps the AI query functionality, does some you know, complex prompt engineering to ultimately generate an alert response. And then we can package this up and you know, put it on a machine somewhere. And every time the person uses the app, the app will automatically make sure these resources exist in a fully self-isolated way. So going back to our app, we can see that this saved here. And now we can start to look at uh, monitoring compliance um, to our actual tagging policies that we have. So in this above section here, we see that we can select a set of usage over a period of time. We can pick you know, tag policies to audit compliance for. You know, I picked the demo tag policy here. Um, but then we can see our usage compliance is still pretty low. Um, how do we fix that? So not only can we trend the compliance to our tags over time, we can do, of course, basically anything in here with Plotly Dash, because um, the visualizations, the interactivity are highly custom customizable. So you can start very, very simple, or you can customize it completely to make it a fully native um, application that fits your exact priorities and needs. So, we can dynamically trend um, values uh, by tag over time. So this is kind of your business understanding of what usage is by tag and by tag policy. And so we are only at about 19% compliance. So how do we fix that? Where our Lakeview dashboards end, this is where our app can begin. So we can use Dash and specifically a component called AGGrid to allow us to find usage that is not compliant. Maybe we pick something here and we can say, um, create a new tag for it, my demo, and then we'll save changes. 
And then it will go analyze the usage, save that tag policy. So you can actually write back save state in Unity Catalog. And then you can refresh the dashboard to update compliance to that policy here. So we can do that. We'll click refresh. And so what, what's happening now is now Dash is gonna fire a bunch of highly analytical queries. So this is not just reading and writing data. This is now going back through all of your tables, your system usage to go and see for your updated tagging policy, what's compliant and what's not and what's missing. So it's doing the audit for you. So we can go back here and look and it's firing all these queries. You can see it running. We can select this query here and see the app start to run, generate the visuals, and it's generating all this SQL under the hood to do your tagging compliance in your auditing process. So this is something a data team would know how to do, but an ops team member wouldn't necessarily know how to scale this process or use it over and over. So this type of complexity can be packaged up automatically um, for end users that are non-technical or so you just don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over. So here we can see, oh, we updated here. I gotta pick my demo tag. And I gotta make sure, can't really see it that well. It's very small here. And so when I pick this demo tag, it then goes and reanalyzes and re-audits the actual uh, usage over time to tell you that your compliance has been updated, you're getting a little bit better. So this now creates a feedback loop and then you can use this filter here to basically find usage that is correctly tagged, correctly matched to a given policy, or find the remaining usage that is not matched to a given policy. So after we added that tag, we went from 19% to 20%, and now we can just incrementally go from there and use our AG grids that are stack ranked by usage to continue to uh, you know, fill the gap for our tagging policy issues. So this is kind of that, it's a pretty simple example of creating a feedback loop to actually do uh, observability without needing to kind of manually code up things from scratch. All right, so that's a good tagging example. Another interesting example is using LLMs. So we can go here to the alerts page, and this is still all on Databricks SQL, and this is the kind of intended user for an ops persona. Maybe they don't really know SQL, they wanna be able to take all that rich tagging context that they've used the app for to create and generate some alerts based off of that. So I can say, you know, hey, generate me alert, an alert that does this. I can't really see what it's doing there, but we'll pick that. Ah. So I'll pick that, I cannot really see. And so when you pick submit, uh, this will use the actual function and call out to DBRX with AI query and actually generate an alert response. So it'll write the alert SQL and it knows how to structure, how to build an alert in Databricks SQL. It'll write the schedule, it'll write the recipients, and then it'll give you the result. And it'll save it here and say, where do you want this information to be stored? Do you wanna change anything? Do you wanna do anything? And if you like it, you can click save. And then it will go and call the alerts API, the jobs API, and save that alert for you in a job. So this is an alert that I persisted as an ops person. Um, so you can decide to you know, keep that, get rid of it, do whatever you'd like. You can delete it. Um, but this, this alert here is one that I already built. And once you click save and the create alert, it'll generate an alert ID, a query ID, and a job ID that you can now reference to automatically keep you up to date. So no code was written and we were able to code for an alert to create you know, an actual contextual alert for a specific tag that shows specific usage over time. And that alert created a job that now is set on a specific schedule on a Databricks SQL warehouse. And most of all, and most importantly, all that state is saved and managed in a controllable way that is, it's kind of hard not to, it's kind of easy not to leave the bounds of, of those challenges there. So ultimately that makes it much easier to scale. So, and what does this code look like under the hood? Well, it's really just Python, Plotly dash code. So, you know, frameworks like this, you would need quite a bit of JavaScript, but for data teams, you don't have to learn JavaScript. You can just do simple app Pythonic based callbacks with SQL 
to manage all this state and build a pretty, an app pretty quickly. So what is that, you know, what, what can we do with this? We can really do anything. We can start to think about other use cases and you can customize these apps to your direct enterprise needs. You can create, create alerts with LLM driven recommendations. So if maybe DB SQL usage goes above a certain amount or if a specific query is increasing too quickly or if a query is taking too long to run, we can build a data app to automatically pull our query history system table or query history API, feed it to an LLM, maybe even provide recommendations on what's wrong with this query, why might it be running slow, who do I need to reach out to, and build an alert automatically to do so. So these are the types of workflows that we can start to build um, with data apps. And not only that, I think this really, uh, since everything is AI embedded, not only can you use AI in the app, but you can use AI, of course, to build the app. So I think this will ultimately increase the TAM of who is building data products and data applications and how data can be commercialized. So it's really kind of a new, um, new process just getting started. Um, so definitely stay tuned this week to check out alert, uh, alerts and announcements on uh, things around observability, AI, and specifically data apps on Databricks. So a um, couple resources here. Uh, we also have a blog. We'll blog a lot more about um, apps, BI dashboards, these Lakeview templates. Um, and you know, if you want to learn more about Plotly, Plotly Dash, um, we have a page with a lot of demos uh, up there. And then all the templates that you showed and quite a few more are available on a public Git repo that you can then download and use. And of course, I'll share the code to this app after the, uh, the talk. And um, ultimately, that is it. Finished a little bit fast. But uh, yeah, thank you all for listening, and I appreciate it.